two. Hello, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, Super Bowl Sunday. Today's date is February the 3rd, 2019. And what an exciting show we have for you. I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. All right. Well, you know what, guys? I know everyone's excited for Super Bowl. It's at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Gladys Knight is going to sing the national anthem and halftime show with Maroon 5. Love, Adam Levine. Then we got Travis Scott and Big Boy. And we'll see who wins today between the Patriots or the Rams. Remains to be seen. It's, you know, 50-50, but let's go Rams. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, AVP today. We're going to talk about uh, ACB, Cron, CGC, and BCCI OTC stock, which, as you guys know, um, is sponsoring Super Bowl. And uh, we have NIO GE from an options perspective in stock. And we also have one of our YouTubers, Rick, who requested we check out DMAC, which is an OTC stock. So let's first start with Avon. So I've you know, been saying that I really like this company uh, in 2018. And I don't know if you guys know, but um, Avon has its first male CEO since 1999. And the gentleman that's running it, his name is Jan or Jan Zigerveld. And he's succeeding Sherry McCoy, who had stepped down from the job. And, um, you know, he's got a very big background. He used to be from Unilever. And uh, he's got a big plan. And, you know, he used to be, um, when he worked at Unilever, he had the top position because he was running the Hellman's mayonnaise for both Southeast Asia and Australia Asia, as well as Middle East and North Africa. So we'll have to see what's going on here. He's got a 30-year track record, global leader, profitable growth in large, complex consumer business. And you know what? That's why they hired him. Avon's chairman, Chan Galbato, is excited to have him on board. He's been in the job now about a year. And uh, Avon, as we know, has had a beautiful move this last few weeks since I was mad at the company for posting the cream for, um, you know, basically making people feel that having cellulite is not good. Um, but aside from that and keeping the emotions separate in terms of the company, uh, head, you know, hedge fund manager Bill Miller, who's the chairman of Miller Value Partners, um, he's liking the stock because he's liking the plans that they're going to uh, cut back on some workforce, which will save them um, a pre-tax charge of $100 million. Also plan to reduce their stock and trying to keep inventory where customers like it. And, um, you know, they're kind of excited about all these things that he's doing already. I mean, he's been there a year, but I mean, it takes time to obviously shape things up. And uh, we're not saying the stock's going to go through the moon, but I think this has a very good future lying ahead. And I'm really pleased, actually, with the way the chart has performed um, over the last, uh, I would say, the last week. I mean, it had a nice pocket pivot, it had nice volume surge, the Bollinger Bands are wide open. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim because he's going to tell us all about this chart. And I'm actually going to look at options and I'll tell you guys tomorrow what options I end up getting and um, go from there. Jim, over to you. All right. First, I'm going to post the yearly chart on Avon. We had a yearly high of three bucks with the resistance right around 293. I have a 291 here strapped on for that triple top that failed and pulled on back to the yearly support of 143. And then it bounced on up, back up to this 254 area that I'm talking about, the 250 area. And then when it did that, it pulled on back, consolidated, and I got in at about this time here and run it up for about 20 cents at two bucks. And then we had that big sell-off during the, um, the last end of the year, 2018, which almost every stock did pull back. And I was telling the room, start looking at some old tickers that you liked, and here was one of them. Avon was down to 143 and ran all the way back up to 2 bucks to that resistance pivot point level. And I call that a pivot point. We call that a, a support level right around 185 on a yearly. So she definitely pulled back to that 185 and settled up right about in here. And then the last two days we had another breakout to create a double top here at this evident price of 250, 251. 
in Friday, I'm going to pull up the 20 day so we'll have a better look now at the 20 day. And these are my extended trend lines and this, a lot of these extended trend lines landed right on the way it ran Friday. So let me post this 20 day chart real fast and give you a look at that breakout that we had on Thursday. And it bounced up off that 190 level, actually hit the 185 which I've been calling out. And it ran up and then it consolidated and pulled back to another support at 227. Then Friday it broke out and ran up to 255. Created that little resistance right around 250. So this is what we got to do with it. It's either going to break that double top resistance at 251, 255. So we need to break that 255 come Monday. If not, it can pull back to support level. That support level is going to be right around in this area right here, right around 233 to 235 for a scalp play or maybe a low support right down here around 226 I want that to hold I've got to have that 226 hold it can't go any lower than that if it does we could probably retest the fit the uh, down here right around two bucks but we want to see the continuation I want to see this breakout come Monday that double top area and like Miss Vegas said there's people interested in this stock now for for long-term position I myself will scalp it in my challenge account. And that's Avon. And the next sector we're going to talk about is going to be these, these marijuana medical plays. In Vegas, do you have anything you want to share on that? ACB? Well. Hello? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Uh, I was talking to myself for a sec. Um, no, I said Aurora Cannabis. I mean, you guys know all about these marijuana stocks. I mean, we've talked, I mean, especially if you're following the channel, but Aurora Cannabis and uh, Cron, CGC, I mean, to me, they're all, uh, you know, still bullish. Um, I think ACB, uh, Jim's going to talk about, I just turned it over to you to talk about the charts. I mean, these are all marijuana stocks and they've all had, you know, some of them had a nice pullback uh, last couple of days or on Friday. Uh, but certainly, uh, I still think that there's, they're still bullish so uh, for longer term holding. So Jim, I'm gonna turn it over to you because you know ACB at one time was over 12 and now it's just under eight here. So um, you can certainly talk about what you're seeing. All right, well, here's the website to Aurora Cannabis. It has a real cool website. So if you wanna go through it and check it out, I, I really do adore it, that's for sure. And we're gonna talk about the yearly chart right now. And this is a stock that I also, uh, think it's very undervalued compared to Cron, compared to CGC, compared to Tillery. And so I want everybody to kind of keep that in mind that I do believe this is an undervalued stock here. And we had, like she said, a 1253 high with a resistance level right around 1232. And we followed this trend here the last place. So I'm going to bring up the 20 day chart, which I had on here a little bit ago. And we followed this trend all the way up when I called this out at five bucks, oh, about 15 or oh, three weeks ago. And it ran all up and hit resistance here at 752, which I have a 746 resistance. And then we had a little channel uh, wedge breakdown here. And every time you see one of these wedges, you get ready for another pullback. It run to this 200 SMA on one of my moving averages on the 20 day, one hour. And then we ran up and we tried to tried to get up to that resistance level, but we did not quite make it. So she pulled back to the 50 and then she followed that 50 all the way up to bear. Here we are again, getting ready to break out of this, out of that double top there at 746. So I'm going to pull up the, the one day, one minute chart, or let me pull up the five day. So I can get you a, a good uh, pick. If we don't break this 747, 748 come Monday, Expect it to pull back to this 727 area. I say that because of this top we had right here. That would be a good solid support. And if that don't hold, and I'll also be playing it off my daily one minute moving averages, which is the 50, the 100, and the 200 on a daily one minute. And I'll post them here in a second. So, yeah, she likes to follow the moving averages, especially on a breakout stock. So here we are on the daily one minute. Right now we're hovering on that 50. If we can follow that 50 up and break out, that'll be fine. If not, I always expect pullbacks on all these cannabis stocks because they're very uh, volatile, but they're also, I'm very bullish. And let me repeat, I am very bullish on these, this sector. 
way before Wall Street was and way before Jim Cramer was. So we're going to expect to pull back. If not, we want this 484, four, uh, 748 to break, and that comes Monday. And the next one, and there's four other ones I just want to bring up to your attention. Everybody knows I've been very bullish and called out Cron, C-R-O-N, at 1015, and it ran to my target level Friday to $20. Let me pull up the 20-day chart. We won't longer see that 1015 on there because we busted past that period time frame. So I've got a beautiful little channel all the way up on this stock, and then we're creating a little flag here. It could be a uh, could be an ascending triangle flag, or it could be uh, a bearish flag. But we did have a resistance up here, and and fat and some of these traders think when a stock runs up too fast that it's it's overbought, so they're going to try to short it. And I think that's what some of the traders are going to try to do with this stock right now. I'm still 100% bullish on this company more than any other one that I've ever mentioned and I want to keep that you know I want to make that perfectly clear so we're going to bring it up to the five day I've got a support level right here that I want people to look at that's very important I don't want it to get below this red channel right here at 2031 2055 and I did call this in the room this support level at 2055 people were wanting to jump in it sooner I said no it's 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 overextended. It needs to have a little rest, but if it can consolidate in this area, that's going to be a very good thing for the next leg up. And the next leg up, we got to break the 2179 area, and that's a solid resistance. So if this thing pulls back any, be patient. I've been calling the stock out every day for a pullback and to get in on that bounce, and it's worked out extremely well for traders in this room. So we have a low support at 2055 with a very low one at 2030. I don't want it to go below that 2030. If it does, it's going to be oversold. So the next one, and just I just want to just kind of just remember, have you remember the CGC and Tillery, and then this other one that Vegas called out with our OTC trader called it out, and it's BCCI. And I personally bought some of this stock. Um, I'm not bought some of the stock, but I personally bought the stock, but I personally bought some of the coffee to try it out. And let me tell you something. If you have any kind of sleep disorder, drink a cup of this before you go to bed, and you'll wake up a shiny new day, and you'll get a good night's sleep. I, and you know what? I think for the viewers, um, we'll put the link, like the website of the coffee link. Yes. Um where you know, and just so you know, like we're not, we don't get anything out of it. Like it's not like we have an affiliate or anything like that. Uh, so full disclosure on that. But we'll put the link because for those of you that might want to order a, a bag of the coffee, um, I have a cousin of mine who's got bad migraines, and I was telling her about it. I just have to find out if they ship it to Canada. But I'm gonna, if they do, I'm gonna order a bag for her because Jim's been telling me how he wonderfully he slept, and you know it's helping him. And so, you know what? I think it's great. So uh, why not? It's just coffee. Yeah, it's barista coffee, and they're going to have a Super Bowl ad on this coffee here. So pay I'm attention to that. I want to see that today, yeah. Be watching that during the Super Bowl program. But I've, I'm really gung-ho about this coffee. It does give you a little buzz. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, you know. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see if anyone wants the coffee. You're yep. free to order to order it yourselves online. Okay, so let's talk about the stock a little bit. Let's talk about sure. the channel. Uh, Vegas called this out in the room, and so did our OTC player. Called it out right around two cents, and it's ran up very beautifully off that two cent area in the past five days. And let me pull up the twenty day chart on this just to show you. And this was a beautiful call, Miss Vegas. We it's got, been a beautiful chart. I just, I'm, I'm really shocked. It's gone to ten, over ten cents. You did call ten cents, though. But we did say target. We were looking for ten cents by Friday, February first, is what we predicted, and yep. we nailed that one. Yep, especially in the last two days when we had the big run from five cents all the way up to eleven point five. So we're we're hitting into the time where we usually buy on rumor and sell on news. But actually, I'm gonna keep this on my watch list and I'm going to be playing the bounces on it I do like the coffee a lot and I do like the company a lot and it, it, it's just 
the coffee's good. I mean, I'm a coffee co uh, uh, connoisseur. I drink the best that I can buy. And I'll spend up to 50 bucks a pound on coffee. Well, that little pack I showed you was two ounces for $25. And I'm telling you, it's worth every penny of it. Because, you know, I can break it down to probably about six to seven, maybe ten cups in that two ounces. It's a tablespoon a piece, so you got, you know, you can do the measuring yourself. And so I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I just can't wait to see how this is going to react on Monday. If it continues the momentum and breaks past this 11.5 area, I'm going to probably pull, play the pullback. But I'm still going to, like I said, I'm 100% bullish on this still. The low support on this thing is going to be no lower than 9.5. And if that don't hold, it's going to be this 8.68 eight area. So keep BCC on watch. I did buy some of the coffee, and, I, and, I'm, a, and I'm, I'm behind it 100%. I think it's some of the best coffee, that, and it's real strong coffee also. But it also kind of mellows you out, and it, and it gives you a good night's sleep. And actually, I drank a cup of it before I went to work the other day, and I felt like I was um, very technical on, on, my, on my work. I felt like it was really giving me a different kind of attention span on that stuff. So... And then the next one we're going to talk about is one that we called out on our last video, and that is Nile. Okay, so you guys know Nile is a former IPO recent in 2018. They make those nice, beautiful, I got to say, beautiful cars. I mean, and reasonably priced. Like, I wonder what it feels like to drive it because I'm a car person, so I would want to feel that it feels sporty. But, I mean, if it was just kind of like a soft drive i don't know if i'd like it but it certainly looks sporty i just don't know what it feels like when you drive it um but i gotta say i'm impressed with nio stock especially because it was you know it pulled back significantly from its original ipo and i'm really happy with the channel that it's in and i think again i mean this one's had also a pocket put um pocket pivot which is one of my favorite favorite setups and that's when a stock closes up and the volume for that day is higher than any other volume on a down day in the last 10 days so this is really important that nio had this pocket pivot happening and uh definitely looks uh, overbought but i think still extremely bullish and jim's gonna talk what he sees next because i see eights and nines potential coming up well, I'm seeing right now this this EP9 car. I mean, this thing looks super nice. And if any of you traders out there want to buy this for me, just feel free to do that. I won't have any arguments. I'll pay the taxes on it. <laughs> so here we are. We hit that resistance level. We did have the breakout on it. And I called this stock at 594, if I remember right. I'm going to pull up three month. This IPO is new also, and it did have a pullback. So, you know, I'm looking, let me pull up the year's chart, and I'll show you about where it broke out, where it, how it ran on that year's chart. We had a, a, a high on that day at, at 1380 with a resistance level right here around 1265, and your second resistance on that time the day before at 1157. So this is a stock that, that ran up i asked the room is this one that we want to hold and i kind of thought we could in a way but i also had part of myself telling me to, that it was going to pull back and it did pull back to around 592 and then bounced up off that 592 and created a little channel here a little channel resistance here right around eight bucks 809 pulled back that 5902 which created a double bottom ran back up to that 8 811 809 area again and then I called this out, and I called this dip. I called it was bearish for a week, and the thing sold off. And that was back during, again, you know, you got to be in the now. December was the worst December that the market's ever had, ever. And so being in the now and knowing that 2019 was going to be a lot better year than 2018, I saw that probably before a lot of people did. And we did bounce up. We bounced up from that the end of the year, bounced all the way up to this resistance level, which created another triple top. One, 
two, three. So this is a hard one to tell what it's going to do next, but the momentum I think is back in play, and that's very important being in the now. We had a great three-day breakout from that 660 level, which I was saying to the room that this is a solid pivot point in the channel with that $7 resistance. And we tried to break that $7 resistance, and it pulled back that morning to the 50 SMA, and then she went ahead and took off. And she took off, and I mean she took off good. Every day she had a breakout. She had a breakout. And then this day she just had another breakout to 811. It didn't hold kind of giving me a little reservation but it did pull back to the previous uh, resistance level that I had at 770 and now we're at 790 after hours so let me just pull up a daily one minute and and I'm, I've been pretty good on this stock knowing when to hold it and when to fold it so we're at 790 we want to go ahead and continue up if it pulls back the 770 is going to be your solid support previous day low I'm telling you if this thing pulls back and you and 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 you make a comment below and tell me if it don't pull back to that 770 area and bounce up from there and start a new channel that's what I want to see this stock do I don't want to see it to run up what I want to see it do now is break out of that old channel and jump into a new one and consolidate and then move on up and this is Nile and I'm very I'm probably 70% bullish on it 60% and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be, a, a, used to be on one of the best stocks that people used to love to play, and it failed, but now it's in a rebound misdemeanor, and that is Vegas. Can you tell me what it is? Oh, yeah. So you guys know GE, and you know what, General Electric. So uh, we were actually looking at, uh, you know, Jim and I were talking, you know, we collaborate a lot during the day, so if you do come check out our chat room and it's not just about just coming in the room. you got to log into the voice channel and listen to the conversations. It's almost like, you know, having the radio show live um, during the day. But, you know, you have to just come in and listen because we do talk a lot about um, the different things that are going on in the market. And one of the things we did talk about was about GE, the turnaround company. And right away, you know, because options are becoming something i'm really loving jim's loving he's just trying it out but he's loving it and we looked at some ge options i think it was for june 12 dollars calls and i picked up a couple of those for 45 dollars. but uh also ge had news they got a military contract uh which was announced after hours and uh it was over 500 million dollar contract it's 517 million dollar contract uh to build engines for the army's next generation and that was announced after hours on friday i think it was 5 30 at night and i was so impressed to see this um and they were chosen by the army to continue to power their black hawks and the apaches for i'm hoping i'm saying it right the apaches for decades um and tony mathis is the president and ceo of ge and uh he looks after their military business and they're definitely looking to continue the uh infrastructure and continue to do the work that's required uh to keep this um collaboration going so jim what do you think of another beautiful chart oh i love this chart and i did call the breakout when finally started breaking out on the upgrade and let me pull this ge chart up I'll pull it up to the 20 to the three month right down here in this area I called a bullish alert on the upgrade and that day it, it did go ahead and run it ran all the way up and hit a little resistance level here at 920 and then pulled back to support level right around this 750 these are all my extended trend lines and I'll keep them on here and use them over and over how many times it takes then the last two we had a major breakout I mean a huge breakout it broke above that $10 mark. Um, Thursday it ran to $10.77, and then Friday it created a red doji. So, and it got that that news was the big catalyst for this stock right now. And I'm still 100% bullish on this trade. I'm going to pull up the 20 day. You can see how it's kind of beautiful channel. It's ran up, kind of not a really hard. <clears throat> bounce but something that shows a lot of respect 
we had to break this 920 area we had a double top then we had the triple top breakout and that happened on Thursday it ran all the way up to my resistance level at 1048 which I just drew in and then pulled back to support level we had a double bottom we had a double bottom after hours and also pre-market which gave me an idea that this thing was going to bounce back up and it sure did it ran all the way up to about 1040 and pulled back now we're in this little little area right here so I'm going to be looking at a long-term option call on this to maybe 12 bucks and then if I see any negativity I'll get me a put to counter react that but I'm pretty sure we're gonna if it dips any at all it won't go no lower than I don't want it to go no lower than 10 cent 10 bucks 10 cents ten dollars that's gonna be my solid support area and if it does I called this 995 Friday I said that might be a good spot to get in because I started <clears throat> seeing that little consolidation period that happened pre-market the day before and we did pull back to that area after hours and we did pull back to that area uh, pre-market so this could happen again but I don't want it to go no lower than that 994 and that could be a good entry for a good scout play or even a long core position and that's General Electric <clears throat> then we got another one we want to talk about that one of our viewers had posted in chat or down below our YouTube channel Vegas you want to mention that one yep so this comes to us from Rick and he's interested in DM so let's see what's happening with uh, Diametica Therapeutics. Uh, this is a company out in uh, Minneapolis, and they recently had publication of a paper for human tissue, uh, calocrine, and the treatment of acute ischemic stroke. And uh, this company, uh, you know, what they do is uh, well they talk about the drug but you know really the company they're at a clinical stage biopharma like many other companies that are out there but they focus on treatment for neurological and kidney diseases and they're listed under the ticker dmac on the otc market um they have a drug for dm199 and um it's basically a uh, protein that's uh you know, that's got, that's apparently produced in the pancreas. And uh, this particular treatment, it looks like it's in a phase two. And uh, we'll hear more about it. But what do you think of the chart, Jim? Oh, well, <clears throat> I'll tell you about the chart here. Let me pull it up. DMAC. I've got to pull up a yearly chart on it first. That's where I like to start my, set my, my studies. And I noticed that it, it had a real nice high of 1377, pulled back to that 200 SMA, bounced up off of it. And then the 50 was going down, which still created to me a bullish, a bullish uh, a movement on it. But it did bounce up past that 100. And then once it, it hit that little resistance level right here at 994, it went ahead and pulled on back to a yearly low of 246. Then after the year, when again, you know, I called a bullish, bullish 2019, every stock I pull up had turned around on that day. Every stock, when I pulled out my crystal ball, every stock that I almost look at. And we've ran up here to a resistance level of 419. So let me pull this up to a 20 day. And there's a couple of things. Let me pull it up to the three month. There's something I saw on this. Yeah. The three month tells you a little story here. We had a resistance level of 399, and that's what we broke out of Friday up to the gap. And when I say gap, there's a little place in here that dipped on down, and you start hitting at what I would call a pivot point, or maybe a resistance, or maybe a pivot point, more or less. But it was a resistance because it did not break that 419 area. So, what we need to do on this stock, and this is a low volume ticker low volume and I want to make understand this is something that's not going to just run up it's going to be something that I'm going to wait for the volume to pick up on it before I get in it but we did try to break up to that bottom gap area which was at 419 so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to the 20 day now and I do like the 20 day chart on it if I can find it there we go how we broke from this 320 area all the way up to 420 in 20 days we've gone up a buck and then Friday was a little choppy 
we had a double top at that 420 area and I love that number and then it pulled back to the support level of 399 so that's going to be your solid support and we're going to have a little pivot point area right here right around 410 so if and I'm just going to watch it see how the volume plays out on it I also do like this 385 area where that 50 SMA is for a low 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 support I hate to see it go any below that but four dollars is going to be your first support with a pivot point at 410 and the breakout area right around 420 and that's DMAC and again I want to thank our follower for showing this stock or we probably would have never saw it and we're going to put it on our watch list and that concludes the aftermarket report and I think Vegas might have something to say here yeah no, Super Bowl I just Sunday. think uh, Super Bowl Sunday I think everyone should enjoy their time enjoy the food enjoy your time with friends family and uh, I'm going to go off to uh, my sister's place and now uh, we're going to hang out and have some Super Bowl uh, munchies and uh, watch the game so you guys do the same and enjoy if you're not a Super Bowl fan I mean I'm not a big fan. I just love the halftime show. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be looking forward to. And uh, you know what? Whoever wins, wins. But definitely looking for Rams. And uh, let's go Rams. Jim? Yep. And um, so I just wanted to bring up one more time that I did buy some of that BCCI coffee, that OTC stock that we played from two cents up to 11.5. And, and I'm going to be very bullish on this after the Super Bowl. So please keep that on watch. And I vouch for the coffee. It's definitely some, it's a different kind of coffee I've ever had. Now, I remember a couple of years back, there was a coffee called Death Wish. I don't know if you all re have ever heard of that coffee, but they also did have a Super Bowl ad on their Death Wish coffee. And you could uh, open that up to YouTube and check that old commercial out. But I kind of liked it. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Have fun watching the Super Bowl. Please don't drive drunk. If you if you have if you if you're drunk, just stay at the party or get you a taxi. But we want the roads to be safe. And this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, February third, two thousand nineteen. And we love stocks. <laughs>